Liberal media had a field day getting a chance to own their favorite punching bag, Joe Rogan, after he mistakenly called out President Biden for a gaffe that actually Donald Trump inflicted. Let's watch. Well, you know, there's people that voted for Biden that are doing it now. They're, yeah. They're like, I, what did I do? Right. Like, what did I choose? Like, I, how is this guy? Yeah. You just can't listen to an interview where he's saying some of the stuff he says that just makes no sense at all. It's like you, you can't listen to those interviews and feel like you made a good decision. I, I don't know how you Did could. you hear what he said like yesterday or a couple of days ago? Mm -mm. He was talking about the Revolutionary War. He's like, one of the reasons why we lost the Revolutionary War, one of the problems with the Revolutionary War was they didn't have enough airports. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen that? I saw that. <laughs> like, what that? The hell? like, pull him. <laughs> it's if, crazy. If, if you were, if you had any other job and you were talking like that, yeah. they would go, hey, you're done. A few moments later. The same stable genius who said the biggest problem we had in the Revolutionary War is we didn't have enough airports. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> So yeah, that's it. Whoa. Right, just, what? Just for, for the record. Is that fake? It's not fake, but he was referencing Trump saying that. Here's what Trump saying it in 2019. Oh. Donald Trump said something about that. And he didn't say G Jesus. He said a stable genius, and that's where the, oh. the transcription. Let me hear what it says. What did he say? <clears throat> in June of 1775, the Continental Congress created a unified army out of the revolutionary forces encamped around Boston and New York and named after the great George Washington commander-in-chief. The Continental Army suffered a bitter winter of Valley Forge, found glory across the waters of the Delaware, and seized victory from Cornwallis of Yorktown. Our army manned the airport. It ran the ramparts. It took over the airports. It did everything it had to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So he f***ed up. <laughs> yeah, he did. All right. Here are some reactions. Ed Krasen's team wrote on X, this is a great example of hypocrisy, and I think we're all hypocrites to some degree. Joe Rogan thinks that Joe Biden claimed there were airports during the Revolutionary War, when in reality Biden was mocking Trump for saying it. We are also quick to judge the president and other politicians when those judgments fit the biases we have, but we are quick to avoid those judgments when it doesn't fit the biases we have. Brian Taylor Cohen wrote, oh my God, Joe Rogan tried to say Biden is unqualified by claiming he said something that Trump said. He got fact-checked in real time this is amazing. And David Pakman said Joe Rogan implodes with Trump Biden cognitive decline mistake. I mean, f fair enough. Joe Rogan got got it wrong and it gets corrected in the show. I find it a little weird. They're they're glee. They have no these critics. Maybe they don't watch enough of Joe Rogan. Like he said, remember when he put out that video we were saying maybe I effed up like he admits it's three hours of talking. He he admits getting things wrong or changes his mind. Like he seems actually pretty gracious about acknowledging the errors when he, compared to other people in the media, um, the, the media writ large. So I'm not sure. Like oh, he owned. He was really wrong. He was wrong, but he pointed out that he was yeah, wrong. Yeah, it's good that you've corrected it. But the question is, why is it that that statement was considered to be disqualifying when it was attributed to Joe Biden, and there are no questions about? Trump's fitness, whether his intellectual ability or his cognitive ability or anything else, when those statements are accurately attributed to him. That's the thing. Now, I think that there are is other evidence that Joe Biden is has physical decline that would not make him a suitable president. I also think that liberals aren't entirely wrong to say Donald Trump says and does things that you can make, build a similar argument about and is not exactly the fittest man in the world and substantively has a lot of beliefs and values and policy agendas that are also very much out of line with what the majorities of Americans want. So does Biden, by the way. These are both historically unpopular candidates for a reason. But I, I don't think it's wrong to point out the way that a certain kind of media cycle makes a great deal of hay out of every Biden gaffe. Some of them are substantive, some of them aren't. Some of them are just the kind of trip ups that people have. There was one over, I think it was during his Hanukkah remarks, where he said something like, um, he started a sentence like my father and then like pivoted to something else and people were trying to make the argument that he was saying that his father was in the Holocaust. When, when you listen to the remarks, that's not what, I mean, I, I, I'm perhaps Biden's biggest critic, 
that's just not what he was saying. So I do think it becomes exhausting to have to endure media cycle after media cycle where there's not a focus on the substantive problems with someone like Joe Biden, but on these gaffes, many of which are not legitimate. And then in this instance, to see that happening and to realize that the underlying graph that was a gaffe that was supposed to mean Joe Biden should be president was attributed to the guy that you think should be president or could be president. Well, I don't know. I don't know that Joe Rogan thinks Trump should be president. I mean, maybe he's having a change of heart. He famously declined to have Trump on the show because that, he yeah, that doesn't was four want. Four years ago. Well, yeah, because he didn't want to be seen helping him. Maybe that has changed. Um, I mean, uh, maybe not by Rogan, but in general, Trump's Trump's words, his, maybe gaff is the wrong way to put it. His his remarks are covered endlessly. Right. I mean, we just had a, a, a another Trump news cycle over the immigrants blood of the nation thing that he said you know that was a that was a two week wall to wall media coverage of what he said yeah, but that which i it's that perfectly wasn't a gaff it's a statement that he said got pushed back on and then kept doubling down and repeating it you know like that's substantive. The same with Joe Biden. Joe Biden repeatedly saying, I'm not calling for a ceasefire is substantive. And we should be talking about that. But that's not the same thing as trying to make uh, Joe Biden thinks his dad was in the Holocaust or Joe Biden um, says that they had uh, airplanes during the Revolutionary War and he's a moron and a simpleton. Like, that's not the same, you know? And so I do think it's worth every, it's coming on everybody maybe to take a step back and realize like, yeah, I know you can get clicks, and you're a podcast, and you're not a political podcast, and Joe Rogan ultimately is not the biggest deal in the world. But yeah, you have egg on your face, not because you got a fact wrong, but because you're obviously trying to cherry pick facts that pick your narrative, which is why I think Brian Krasnerstein, he's a big liberal who I don't agree with about much, but I think that his statement there was, was accurate and right, that we all need to take, everyone makes mistakes, but we all need to take a step back and ask ourselves why we're, we're trying so hard to fit everything into a preconceived narrative. Yeah, I mean, you shouldn't do that. I find both candidates very unappealing um, in terms of their policies, in terms of their presentation, in terms of their age and their cognitive positioning right now. Um, I, so I definitely think you shouldn't like hold your punches for one or the other. Um, try, I mean, right, it's not quite the same because Trump says a lot of things that I think are ridiculous and untrue. Biden is more likely to, I guess, what is classically counts as a gaffe where you say something that just doesn't make sense because you're having like a senior moment. Like we needed more but, airports during the Revolutionary War. Well, <laughs> right. I, I mean, <laughs> Trump says it too, uh, but there are more of these things from Biden. I mean, I'm not trying to stack them up against each other. I don't want either to be president. Yeah. And, and, and frankly, I don't want either to be president because I don't like their policies, not because yes. they occasionally say ridiculous things. Although them occasionally saying ridiculous things from an electoral standpoint does have huge liabilities that even a lot of Democrats think Biden is too old to be the president. In a, in a, you know, people have a, we're more frankly ideological and we put more stake or more, uh, it matters more to us what their substantive policies are, what yeah. their ideology is. Frankly, that matters more to us than a lot of and why is that? basic American people. Is there a world where, frankly, not that it's his responsibility, but is there a world where if Joe Rogan were to focus more on policy, then more people who listen to his very popular show would also care about the policy differences between Trump and Biden and RFK Jr. and Marianne and Cenk Uger and Cornell West and Jill Stein? Well, I, I don't know that I would say it's a policy-free three hours. I mean, they, on, I mean, COVID was really the only time I was regularly listening, but they got into a lot of policy having to do with that. Um, I don't know, he had Bernie Sanders on Who's to got the talk best about COVID policy. policy. Who, who, right. who, who's going to do actually what about COVID and what policies changes with respect to COVID? Do people want to change going forward? And what are the implications? Yeah, of I, I don't know that that doesn't another? come up on the show. I, I think foreign, foreign policy issues, Ukraine and probably even Israel as have been discussed somewhat su substantively on the show. I, I don't know. What, what are you saying? You're saying that doesn't happen? I'm I don't... saying that we create the world we live in. I'm saying that all of us in the media have a responsibility to effect. We, we sit here like we don't have any input into, well, people don't focus on policy. Well, you know, this is, I think we, we live in a world where we do segments, like Joe Rogan is focusing on this segment, owning Biden, dunking on Biden. Like that's, that, 
that drives engagement on social media and the like. And I do think that it has some negative consequences down the line, especially for people who I think do care about real things, who do substantively care about health care policy and who substantively care about whether or not they have a living wage. A lot of working class people who listen to Joe Rogan's podcast and who came to him and liked him and liked Bernie because they were speaking directly to those policy issues. And I think Bernie showed the world that there was a lot bigger appetite for politicians who are willing to talk about those kitchen table issues and talk about policies that deliver on improving their kitchen, kitchen table concerns than the media likes to say there is. That, that's, that's what I'm saying. I think there could be a lesson for us, for us all. This is, I'm not trying to dunk on Joe Rogan now, but I do think Crasserstein is right. It's like a moment for reflection for us all. Well, I'm not going to denigrate people, though, for... I mean, if I want to talk about what people care about or purport to care about, and they do care about questions of basic um, fit, mental fitness, physical fitness, and these, these kinds of more abstract than we care about leadership tests, and I don't think you can ignore Do you think that. Rogan would have brought up that clip if he had understood from the beginning that it was a Trump gaffe and not a Biden gaffe? I have no idea. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm not a regular watcher of the show. But I, he's not, I, don't, I, don't think of, I don't think he's like, you're portraying him as this mindlessly pro-partisan or pro-Trump figure? I, I don't think I'm doing that at all. I don't think I've ever said that or I've never done that at all. Okay. It was a Trump mistake, not a Biden mistake. Both Trump and Biden make a lot of mistakes. And it is insane to me that they're being, being inflicted on us as our choice for... 2024, and I wish there was some other way, which is why we give as much time on our show to third party and independent challenger candidates as we possibly can. Well, I mean, I hope Joe Rogan follows a, that model because he could have Mary Williamson on, he could have Cornell West on, he could have. I'd be all for it. He should Phillips have on the Green on. Party candidate, he should have the Libertarian Party candidate on, he should have Dean Phillips and Marianne and Jane Gugger and everyone else. I would support it. We've had a lot of those people on. We will continue to, all we can, I can't police Joe Rogan. We can only do our own show. And we do a lot of that kind of coverage. Um, not just because the audience has interest in it, but because we think it's important. So we will continue to do that in 2024, which is almost upon us, Brianna. Another year in this chair. I know how excited you are. More rising right after this.